Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, my name is Gorilla Mezzo, and this is shit. Welcome to Scarrow Mezzo's High Intensity Tournament, but let's get right to the ringside for this action, and it looks like the man himself is starting us off in the ring tonight. Here comes Skuramezzo, the co-founder of Shit. Absolute legend, the backstage brawler, made a name for himself in the JFW, beating virtually everyone that ever faced him backstage, and doing some cool stuff in the ring too, but we don't need to talk about that, that's neither here nor there. Right now, he is the man of the hour. He is opening up the very first match of this 32-man tournament. And it is going to be Skuramezzo versus... Nah, just kidding. You're going to have to wait on that one, folks. Let's get in there and see who he's got. Remember, every single match in shit is a randomized stipulation. I have been told that Skuramezzo's match is... A completely normal one-on-one -on -one match. Who will he face? You will find out in just a few seconds. Let's get to ringside and see. Look at that. All of his glory. There he is. The man, the myth, the legend, Skuramezzo. Oh, wait, look, looks like he's calling for a mic, folks. Looks like he wants to start us off right. All right, let's hear what he's got to say before this match kicks off. Oh, hey there, shit. My name's Skiramezzo. I'm the co-founder. I uh, got this whole tournament started alongside with my good buddy recently out of a job named Tarsus. I don't need to talk about what he was doing to get himself in that predicament. All I need to tell you is that you've got the next few weeks of shit action every Wednesday night. We're doing four matches a night as best we can. Randomized stipulations, single elimination. Shit is open to anyone and everyone from the JFW, from shit, from wherever else. And I'm going to start us off tonight I'm going all the way, though, and I'm going to see Tarsus in the finals, so uh, spoiler alert on that one. You're going to have to uh, get used to seeing me win, but let's get my first victim out right now. Who's it going to be? And look at that. Skaramezzo calling his shots, and there's Wolfbark, JFW's canine wrestler Wolfbark. Hopefully, skaramezzo has got some eggs in his pockets for this dog. Here we go, Skaramezzo versus Wolfbark, regular match, one-on-one, -on -one. shit is officially off and running, folks. Yeah, Skaramezzo calling his shot, saying he's going all the way to the finals, he's going to meet his co-founder, Tarsus, who is in a bracket that could take him all the way to the finals to meet him. That would maybe rub some fans the wrong way. You got to believe the top two guys who are running the show going to the finals would be a bit of a disappointment. But hey, it's up to them, not us. We'll see what happens right now. The only thing standing in Skrull's way is uh, seven feet of dog over there. And Skurrow backing his opponent into the corner. Ref going to have to separate him here. Playing it nice and cool. Showing off his uh, his size advantage there. No, Wolfbar coming in. No, look at that. The rock bottom right off the bat must be sending a message to the JFW. A move that ended plenty of matches for Skurrow before. Hits it there and then backs Wolfbark right back into the corner. Or excuse me, into the ropes. Oh, but a dirty shot by Wolfbark as the ref separates them. And now, once again, Ref going to have to separate him. Scarrow really trying to control the pace with his extended power here. Wolfbark, oh no, but Wolfbark counters him, tosses him into the ropes, and now a misstep by Scarrow, and he's in all sorts of trouble here. 
No, the huge Larian. Larian from L and a quick pinfall. Could this be it? No, not even a one count. Wolfbark came to shit from the JFW. Maybe wants to prove JFW superiority, but he's dumped to the outside by Skuro, who is in hot pursuit here. And look at this. Arm drag takedown, right? No, Wolfbark countering into that drop toe hold. And now Skuro counters right back, throws him down to the pavement. That's 10 feet, no, sorry, 50 feet of pavement in the shit arena. We ain't no scrub JFW promotion, that's for damn sure. And now Wolfbark battering back the, oh no, countered again. Look at these two guys going at it. It's, it's fast and furious on the outside right now. Skuro going for the, no, can't drop him. Counter after counter, both these guys want this first win. Oh, but Wolfbark seems to get the advantage driving his knee into the upper back there. And then just a furious right hook. And he drops him, face plants him in the middle of the ring. Oh, no. Look at this. Wolfbark on fire coming in. Double knees to the back. He hits it. Backstabber. And he's going to not go for a pin. Maybe he's going for the pin here. There are rope breaks, so he does separate him. Goes for that quick pin. Oh, no. Oh, just a two count. Scarrow kicking out at the last second. Wow, this match will continue. And now Scarrow trying to furiously mount a comeback. He's taking a ton of damage now, sending his opponent into the corner. Scarrow, no, takes a foot to the face. These two guys are so evenly matched here. And that's how we want it in shit. Everyone gets featured in the shit tournament. Skuro just savagely sends him into the turnbuckles, tosses him aside like a rag doll. And now Skuro gonna try and... No, he goes for that hard head, but looks like it did not work out for him. Hurt his own head more than Wolf Barks and then takes the drop kick. Skuro in serious trouble right now. But he comes back with that huge forearm, sending him back into the ropes here. Oh, no, they collide. They're even again. Skurl one more time. Sends him over the ropes. Can he get anything going here? Uh-oh. Oh, this looks dangerous. Hardest part of the ring, folks. What's he got for him? Oh, my God. A huge DDT on Wolfbark. Wolfbark down, but not out. Gets right back up and answers with the drop kick. Oh, no, the arc lay. Oh, by Wolfbark. Skuro is down. This is not false count anywhere. He's got to get him in the ring. A second arc lay. Oh, are you kidding me right now? Skuro is done. Skuro is done, folks. No, Skuro sending him back into the ring. Oh, no, huge forearm there by Wolfbark. Wolfbark sends him right back out of the ring. <laughs> Fair enough, Artvac. Oh, and uh, high impact move. Wolfbark misses. Skur with some quick kits, kicks there. He's got those tree trunk legs. Those are good things to uh, to cause some damage with. Now he's climbing back in the ring. He's got Wolfbark. Big leg drop right on the apron there. And he's hopped in. This could be a pinfall right here, folks. Oh, and here it is. We got a one, two, no, just the two count kick out. Definitely not human control, Chip. It's AI, AI. I, I'll talk about that after the broadcast, though, if you got questions. All right, and now here, oh, Skrull going for that pump handle shoulder breaker. Hits it, and surely this is it now. No, he's standing him back up, and he gets the leg sweep. Wolf bar coming right back. And that big back body drop. And a stomp misses with the stomp. Wolfbark smartly gets out of the ring, and they both reset. Wolfbark sent into the corner here. Oh, no, that elbow. Wolfbark coming out of it. Skuro in trouble here. Oh, look at this. Oh, no, a second backstabber. That is a finishing maneuver. The pin, this has got to be it. Just the two count kick out again. This match is going to continue. What an opening match for your Skirmetso High Intensity Tournament. And Skuro now looking at him. Oh, he's thinking about that pop up power bomb. He hits the knee. Oh, here it comes. No counter coming. 
Biggie, there it is. That's got to be game over. One, two, three, call it. No, the two and a half kick out. Skrull can't believe it. Call him for the three count on the ref. Wolf Bar kicks out. And now Wolfbar coming in for that pinfall. Oh, dirty pinfall. Feet on the ropes. Ref doesn't see it, but Skrull able to kick out. I didn't. I, uh, I, I believe it was experimented with J5. This match is 100 versus 100, but after this match, it didn't work out with a lot of competitors, so I canceled it, and I went back to the normal ratings because it just... I'll, I'll, exp I'll, I'll talk about that later. Um, this match is 100 versus 100. The biggest difference is that counter uh, limiters are off, so there's more counters in these matches. Skuro setting up here for another pop-up powerbomb. However, Wolfbark in serious trouble. This has got to be it. If he sticks this... And he does, and he goes right into that pinfall. One, two, three, count it, folks. And that is it. Skuramezzo, your winner in the very first shit tournament match. He has won. Wolfbark, thanks for coming. What a match to kick off the Skuramezzo High Intensity Tournament. <laughs> yeah, there's no way around that, Wolf Park. There's no way around that. No matter what happens, everyone's going to bitch and moan. Skuro's the winner tonight, though, and you got to believe a guy, a competitor like that, finally getting a chance to stretch out and just perform. And what a performance it was. Congratulations, Skuro. So commiserations, Wolf Park. That is your first match. And it is going to be Skuro moving on to the second round. Yeah, yeah, J5. You know, what do I want to do? You guys want to talk about the match or do you guys want to talk about how you think I made the show? Anyway, coming up next on shit, we have a cage match coming. Cage match is always a question mark in the JFW. Will that continue on shit? But your second match of the night is a cage match. Let's get to ringside to see who's going to be in it. And look at that. The man of the hour, Ardvac. Ardvac had just not the most storied JFW career, won the money in the ass contract, got all sorts of screw jobs because Mr. Jim Smith, man, wanted a different guy to carry that briefcase around. But Ardvac outlasted as best he could and eventually was forced out of the JFW at, our, at their last pay-per-view just on Sunday night. Look at that, though. He's wearing those shit colors. He think he's uh, think he's drinking the Kool-Aid here, but he has joined the shit tournament. He has a cage match, but who is he going up against tonight? We will find out in just a few seconds. Yeah, Ardvac, one of the most resilient wrestlers I've ever seen. Could take on two-on-ones, never really got a win, but, but vastly overperformed. But what's he got? Who's he getting in this cage tonight? Yeah, it's going to be tough climbing that cage with those sandals on, but uh, that's the way the shit tournament works. You don't get to pick your match. You don't get to pick your opponent. You're just out there. You got to perform at your best with what you're given. And let's see who he's facing. Oh, my God. It is. Could it be? recently returning in the JFW. And by recently, I mean it's going to take a while for him to get to the ring. But that is Thaw, the Waitrix. He's here, the Norse Sanut himself, the Destroyer, sizing up the ring. He sees his opponent. He sees that cell. And here we go. In about 18 minutes, once he gets to the ringside, Thaw. <laughs> uh, this is so depressing not being able to hear any sort of <laughs> music or audio uh, that's really disappointing oh I know what I can do while Thaw's making his entrance I can just start the video on my page and try and sync it up uh, 
Because Thor's gonna Thor's gonna take a long time. Not Thor. I don't want to get us sued. There we go. All right. Here we go. This is the way to do it. This is the way to do it, folks. And Thaw is in the ring now. <laughs> cage match. You can pin your opponent. You can submit your opponent. You can walk out of the cage. Uh, or... <laughs> Or you can climb over it. It's pretty weird of a stipulation to have to deal with. But that's what we're getting for this match. Will it be Ardbeck? Will it be Thaw? Find out right after that bell rings, folks. And here we go. We are off and running. And uh, early, early advantage to Thaw. Ardbeck ran in, could not get going. Oh, that would be devastating, Muppet. Muppet Pac-Man is confirmed for shit. His opponent has not been revealed. His match has not been revealed yet. We'll find out soon, though. And if it's a cage match, there goes that 619. But tonight, it's about this cage match. Bob versus Ardvac. Ardvac with an early, early advantage here. Now working over that arm. And, you know, the power, the uh, the ability to uh, just beat down an opponent, that's the advantage clearly in Thaw's corner. But Ardvac, very resilient, might offset that and probably has a bit of a speed advantage. Oh, no, they both miss there. Well, J5, your assumptions there would assume that uh, shit is playing favorites with its rostered members, Ardvac clearly being one of them, uh, and uh, the non-rostered members like Thaw and the other JFW uh, contestants. And I got to believe that shit is an equal opportunity employer, a place where everyone gets free reign, and, and uh, the predetermination is not based on the ego of who's working for what company. That's what I'm hearing, Muppet Pac-Man. That being said, don't quote me. If Ardvac can somehow find a way to win this match over Thaw, I don't have many legs to stand on if that happens. But, you know, Thaw, Thaw has a bit of ring rust still. Lost a match to the crew the other day. Um, that's C-R capital E-W-E. -E. It's a sheep thing. It's pretty unclever, but that's, uh, that's how the JFW rolls. But that ain't how shit rolls. In shit, we get awesome matches like this one here. And look at this. Thaw thinking, screw the cage. I'm just going to make you tap out right now. And let's not forget, Ardvac, a tap out specialist. He has that disarmor to go to. Maybe the cage won't come into play at all in this match. You certainly can pin to win in this one, uh, Muppet. That's the weird thing about cage matches. Oh, beautiful suplex by Thaw. Now he is firmly in control here. And nope. Oh, he gets countered and then punched by Thaw. And then counters Thaw again. Neither of them can get this German off. And so uh, Ardvac just going to another punch. Oh, look at this. This beautiful split leg suplex. Love to see it. And now Ardvac thinking he's got a shot to win it here. This would be pretty shocking if he can get out. But can he find a toehold here? He's wearing those sandals. Not the best thing to climb a chain link fence. And it sure looks like Thaw's right there to get him. If he takes his time, no, he's taking, no, now he's going up after him. Oh, Thaw's got him easy. A couple punches here, and he's going to throw him right back in the ring. We, oh, wait, no, the kicks. The kicks by Ardvac. Thaw's down. There's no one to stop him. The only one to stop him is Ardvac's weird fear of heights that's causing him to not want to just fall eight feet and win this match. Can he get his leg over? This could be over, folks. This is over. It's all over. Thaw on his knees is not going to be able to stop Ardvac. And Ardvac has won! Ardvac has won the cage match, and Thaw is eliminated in the first round. Huge upset there. 
Ardvac is your winner. Congratulations, Ardvac. Commiserations, Thaw. There you go. Looks like shit is 2-0 and over the JFW. Not that anyone is keeping track right now. <laughs> hey, I am not a pro athlete, J5, like these top competitors in the ring. Nor am I wearing body armor like Ardvac. Oh, and you can see it in Thaw's eyes. He's pissed about that loss. He thought he could go far here. <laughs> Lemon, don't scream rigged until you lose in the first round next week. And now, falls count anywhere. Our very next match on shit. Let's get right to ringside. We don't like waiting around. Oh, and there you go. It is Finney, no longer a fucking rat, still paying tribute to his former tag team partner as he pop, top, pops those bubbles. Here comes Finney in a Falls Count Anywhere match. I got to believe he stuffs that beanie, J5. It's impossible for me to think that his forehead could possibly be that big. Uh, Ansi, I think we'll have to wait and see on that, but the answer is yes. The only problem is there's basically nothing that Lemon wears that could really be changed to a black and white scheme. Uh, and uh, not, not, not so far off for FanFox either. <laughs> I'm pretty sure those lime green boots broke the one stream that uh, they, they appeared in. Oh, and who is this? This is a new competitor in the JFW in shit. It is Gengar, the Tomb Guardian. And that is a very, very large undead man coming to the ringside to beat the tar out of the very small and very quick Finny. Yeah, can't. I, you know what, Lemon? You got me there. Can't really argue it because I definitely didn't spend an hour last night wondering how to change you to to fit the theme. I, I can't say that I have Ardvac, but now I'm uh, color me curious. <laughs> That's all. Ah, some good tunes coming in too. Underutilized music, job, formerly of Jinder Mahal, but uh, this is Gengar. Welcome to the wrestling world, Gengar. Let's see what you got. <laughs> yeah, J5. <laughs> All right, falls count anywhere. The pinfall can happen in the ring. It can happen backstage. It can happen ringside. There are no uh, rope breaks uh, or countouts in a match like this. Here we go. Big man versus a very small man. And now, you know, Finney might be at a disadvantage here. He has been in a tag team for a very long time. One of the best tag teams of all time in the JFW with their epic two heads championship run in JFW. The fucking rats, his partner, Chunter, and he. But now he's off on his own. Can he sink or swim here? Clearly showing signs of missing having a tag team partner with that logo from their old tag team. But right now he's got to get himself. Oh no. Oh no. Huge last ride power bomb. Oh gosh. Drives him practically through the ring. Oh no. He's going for a second power bomb. A second power bomb. And Finney is down. He just folded him up like a rag doll there, but he doesn't even go for the pin. Just working on that hamstring now. And I think Finney might be a little bit outclassed here size-wise. There are no weight divisions in shit. This is just a pure tour. A third power bomb. Oh, look at that. Sits down into the pinfall. Call it one. Just a one count. Finney kicked out at one. He's got some fight in him. He's got a lot to prove right now. Yeah. Yeah, fair enough, Ardvac. Very fair. Very fair point. Yeah, no, Chunter still employed by the JFW. No, 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 
not really sure what's going on for his future, but that's neither here nor there. This is a shit broadcast, and right while well, that sounded bad, this is a broadcast of the shit tournament, and here comes Finney, those double legs, that beautiful kick, does not have the cartoonishly large rat feet on anymore, but still making use of it, and going right into a bully choke here. And Finney, really, after that opening salvo fired off by Gengar, seems to be uh, performing pretty well. Can he stay on top, though? Oh, look at that. The self-rock bottom. We've seen that in matches before, folks. And he misses with the stomp. Gengar rolling back up to his feet. And then, oh, no! Another zip-down powerbomb into a pin. Doesn't even get the one count. Finney has a heart of gold, but does he have a body to back it up? We'll see. Is this poor bastard just going to be powerbombed into a paste, or can he turn something on here? Gengar seems to be um, having some problems estimating Finney's small frame there and missing wildly on a few attacks, but, oh, the double clap to the ears. That'll Oh, no, what's going on here? Look at this. This Alabama slamma over the ropes. Oh, God. It's a massacre, folks. This is a massacre. Oh, no, Finney kicking out. Finney trying to come back here. Oh, he somehow got caught by that boot. Looked like he missed them. Ooh. And then sending a message, the coup de gras, the standing coup de gras by Gengar. That is finishes, Finney's finisher. And he just did it to him with 400 pounds of undead fury. And another power bomb coming. Good night, sweet prince. Oh, oh, stealing a move, sending a move to the number one guy here, Skurimetsa, with the pop up power bomb. That's it. Wow, no, Gengar, he kicks out. And Finney, I, I don't know how he's still going. He must be running on fumes here. But look at this, the bloody Sunday. That's put people away before. Can he get the pin? Doesn't go. No, he does go for the pin. Two count. Kicks out at two. Finney hit him hard with that bloody Sunday. And now Finney's really going to have to turn this around, trying to hype himself up here. He's got to stay on the big man, though. And he does. Runs right in. Oh, and there, there's that sling blade. Finney sends him into the corners. Oh, this is where Finney likes him. He can set him up for that big double kick. Will he do it? He does. Here it comes. This will set up Finney's coup de gras finisher if he chooses to go for it. He nails him. Is he going for the... He is. He's going to the top rope, folks. Here we go. Coup de gras coming. Can he stick it? No, he's beckoning him up. He knew he didn't have a chance at it. He saw him recovering, and now he's up. Oh, he misses with the missile drop kick, and now Gengar is back in control here. Finney's real hurt. You know, falls count everywhere match. All the action's been in the ring. Don't know if that's going to change anytime soon. Misses with the lariat. Misses with, a, with three punches there. <laughs> Another last, oh, last ride too. Oh, good night, Finney. Call it. That's that's it. That's it, folks. He's not even trying to go for the pin. And that was a mistake. Finney punches his way out of it. Back to a vertical base here. And then Finney dumps him to the outside, and here we go. If Finney had a chance, it's right now. High impact maneuver coming. Top rope to the outside. What's going to happen? Oh, he drops the elbow from the top to the outside, connects with the big man, and now he's got him outside of the ring here. Flips him up. Oh, look at this beautiful maneuver. He's got to pin him. He's, he might have him right now. Oh, no. Countered out and thrown to the floor. And now Gengar. Oh, he's calling for something. This looks bad. This looks ominous. Oh, no. The coffin kick by Gengar. Puts him out. Goes for the pinfall outside of the ring. And that is it. Gengar with that 400-pound force foot just plowing through Finney. That was some serious power on display there. Gengar is your winner.
And here we go, newcomer to the wrestling world, his first true match, televised match, Gengar a winner, and that was some force on display. Finney, a very heroic effort, trying to come back, but just completely outclassed in size category. Just getting just getting power bombed after power bomb, could not outlast them. And then he missed them on the very end there, setting up that coffin kick. And Gengar is your winner, folks. All right, and that is three out of four matches. We have one match next, and it is a submission match. The one thing we do know here, co-founder of shit, Tarsus, is in this match. He is your main event tonight, and it is Tarsus. Skuro already calling his shot, saying he'll see you in the finals, Tarsus. They're on opposite sides of the bracket, and I got to believe they're going to go the distance. Here comes Tarsus. A man who did it all in the JFW except get results from the upper management. He had a shot at the extra arms belt against EAB, stolen from him by Jimmy Minmax Tastic. He then came back, could not get anything going, assaulted Jimmy Minmax Tastic backstage, putting him in the hospital in a deadly backstage brawl. That's what set up uh, Table Leg Wanger's ultimate claim of the of the uh extra arms belt oh but no more about jfw because here it comes one of the toughest guys in the jfw unseen walker stepping right out of the ramp submission match against the the dwarf slayer and the super heavyweight luchador coming up right now the Mexicutioner. I love it. And he's fired up. He's trying to get the shit audience behind him. I think that's going to be a hard sell. He is a JFW former champion, a mainstay. Nothing against him and an excellent in-ring performer. But you get Tarsus across the ring from him. He's a co-founder. Without Tarsus, none of this tournament would be happening right now. You got to believe the entire shit audience, the shit universe, if you will, the shit -iverse, is on Tarsus's side in this one. And here we go. Submission match. The only way to win it is to make your opponent tap out. Do not know what Tarsus has for a, for a finishing submission move. We know, uh, we know that, uh, awesome, whatever it's called dragon sleeper from uh, Unseen Walker, the stunner into a, a bully choke effectively uh, has been effective in matches before. Let's see if he can get a tap out here, but he's got to go through one of the best of the best in the shit tournament to do so. Oh, look at this, the rollover DDT. And yeah, the bigger man is now on the ropes here. No, no, he's not. Huge, huge lariat there. And then countered out Unseen Walker. These are two big, big, beefy men, even if one of them doesn't have much of a height advantage. And it looks like uh, Unseen Walker is coming right back in the ring here, suplexed back into the ring. And now, oh, look at this. Oh, the Samoan drop by Tarsus. Tarsus has some very high impact maneuvers from the top ropes, but he can slug it out in the ring too because of his size. And what can you say about Unseen Walker, a former champion, fighting back, just throttling throttling Tarsus in the ring here and now going for his first submission effort here first real one a, a uh, camel clutch here 
We've never seen this end a match before, and we're not going to now as Tarsus counters out of this. Oh, but he gets him with that flying elbow. And now beckons him up. Tarsus going outside the ropes to recover a little bit. There are rope breaks in a submission match, so this is effective. Oh, no, but he's punched off the apron. Less effective when you get instantly attacked. But he misses with the kick, and Tarsus back on his feet and trying to fight back. But no! Oh, the flying, the flying forearm again. And now Unseen Walker trying to really lay it on to Tarsus. But Tarsus just muscles him back into the ring. Oh, and hits him with the kick there. Hits him again in the back. And now Tarsus trying to slow this pace down a little bit to recover from the opening onslaught. Oh, look at this, though. Unseen Walker dropping him, ch chokes him out on those ropes there by dropping him. And then, oh, gets arm rung into a lariat, dropped. Tarsus really think, oh, look, the disdain, just rubbing his face into the mat and dropping the elbow in his mid-back. And now he's thinking top rope. This is where Tarsus shines. That is a lot of luchador to fall on you. He's beckoning him up. What's he going to do, cross body maybe? No, he's not going to do anything. He's going to overshoot him and uh, deftly dodged by Unseen Walker with no delay. But it doesn't help him out as he gets dropped there. And now Tars is maybe thinking about locking in some sort of submission move. Oh, and he does. He goes to the half Boston Crab, sending a message to Jimmy Minmax-tastic, I got to believe. But a rope break saves him. Now he's going for the full Boston Crab. But again, his arm's on the rope, so it's called out again. Oh, Tarsus is a big man. It's hard to get away from those ropes with some of these moves. One more time, and a third time he hits the ropes, and the ref calls it loose. And those are three opportunities for Tarsus to put away Unseen Walker that were just missed. Yeah, I agree, J5. You know, in uh, in Mexico, some luchadors, they do not use rope breaks. They do not use tag outs either in tag matches. Luchador rules. You just drop under the uh, under the bottom rope and your partner is tagged in. So, you know, Tarsus hasn't had a ton of matches in the in America, in the JFW. But uh, uh, he definitely missed an opportunity there. And it looks like, oh, he, Unseen Walker getting another... <laughs> Another camel clutch in, just missing those ropes himself. But uh, Tars is able to fight out. Again, camel clutch has not been a match-winning uh, maneuver in the JFW in shit thus far. <laughs> well, there's other rules, too. The other good one is in Japan. They do 10... Uh, they do... Uh, 20 second count outs not 10 second count outs so a lot of times when uh, japanese wrestlers come to america they accidentally get counted out because they think they've got 20 seconds outside the ring instead of 10 oh and speaking of count outs there won't be one here but tars is sending him outside onto that 30 feet of concrete and now he's gonna work him over no, he's not. He's going to be countered by Unseen Walker and thrown right back in the ring. Here we go. Yeah. Yeah, also fair, Ansi. Oh, look at this, though. Unseen Walker gets him up and drops him on the ropes. He, uh, he had to go through one of those earlier. Oh, and so evenly matched these two men. The only difference between them is about a foot in height. But the Luchador trying to put away Unseen, but he will not go away. And now he's just going to get stomped in the midsection. And now Tarsus could be in some trouble here. And the, the shit universe just willing Tarsus to his feet, trying to get the co-founder of this tournament back into this match as he gets that neck massage.
And no, Unseen Walker continually just laying it into his back. Oh, there's that stunner. And he, sure enough, he rolls around for that Dragon Sleeper. Oh, no, is he going to tap? No way he taps here. No, he didn't. He held on. He did not tap out. And the match continues, going for that uh, trapezius pinch again. And then gets his leg swept out. Tarsus, he's got to be on his final uh, push here. He's going to have to put away the Dwarven Slayer as quickly as possible because he's not going to have a lot left after all that damage. And that's one way to do it. Just levels him with that, with that arm. And here we go, working on his shoulder now. And I think the end is near for Unseen Walker. No, he sweeps the leg again and goes back to just savagely throttling him. And oh, gets the shoulder block. And now Tarsus, what's he thinking here? He's thinking shoulder massage again. Whoa, and there is a bit of an upskirt from Unseen Walker. A bit of an uh, incidental contact, uh, unfortunately. But he gets out of that trapezius pinch. And is, oh no, kicked in the gut. Misses with the flying uh, body, uh, crossbody there. But he doesn't miss a second time. He flattens him. And now he's really got to think about locking in that, 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 that half crab, that full crab, something to put away Unseen Walker. No, Unseen. He's got him down. He's recovering a little bit. He's he's taunting the JFW universe, or excuse me, the shit universe here. He says, I've got your boss on the ropes. I'm going to send him out of the ring. You want one last look at him because I'm about to finish him off. And I think uh, this could be a mistake by Unseen Walker. He probably needed to lock in a submission move earlier on if he wanted to get the win here. Instead, he's going to get driven right into that ring post. This match has everything right now, folks. Unbelievable stuff. Two competitors that just want to win and move on, but one of them really has to. Tarsus has to win this match. He is a co-founder of shit, and he's going to let us all know why. There's that big body slam onto the 30 feet of concrete. And here we go. The end is near for Unseen Walker. Oh, yep. He's coming right in there. He's got that chin lock applied. Is that going to be enough? Would have liked to see a bigger impact maneuver. And no, Unseen Walker counters out of it. Yeah, no shit, J5. There was a reason for that design. Oh, no, and now oh, Tarsus couldn't figure out which corner he wanted. Incidental contact with the ref going to the top rope here. Ref not happy about that contact, and he drops a huge elbow into the sternum, flattening Unseen Walker, and he just needs to lock in a submission, and surely this is over. <laughs> no, Unseen countering out, throttling Tarsus. Last effort here, maybe. This match will not end. Oh, what's he thinking now? Unseen Walker <laughs> going right back to that trapezius claw, whatever you want to call it, the shoulder massage, doing a lot of work tonight. Will someone tap out to that? Oh, no. Oh, he stunned him. Oh, I think he bloodied him. Yeah, he popped up and unseen, or excuse me, Tarsus counters him there. And then the big European uppercut by Tarsus. And he's going to drop him here. Running powerbomb coming. No. Oh, look at that. That's the uh, the welcome to Asbury Parker. In Tarsus' case, welcome to Fargo ND. And here comes the finale, folks. Locks in that, uh, that, that uh, headlock again. And no, no tap out. No tap out coming. Unseen Walker. Pump handle. Pump handle slam on him. And a big kick to the gut. Oh, but he misses with the flying crossbody. And he gets punched in the gut in return. And then here we go. One more time. Half Boston Crab. No! Foot on the rope again. Oh, suspect call by the ref. Said the foot was on the rope. It looked pretty clean to me, though.
And now Unseen Walker sends him into the ropes, picks him up, puts him down. Oh, that gut wrench. And now, oh, he is working through something there. But he now, unlike Tarsus, drags him right into the middle of the ring here. Oh, could we see it? The brrr, Yep, and he does. He drops the hammer on him. But this is not a pinfall match. He's going to have to lock in something here if he wants to try and get a tap out. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. The Dragon Sleeper locked in. No way he taps. No way. Come on, Tarsus. Come on, Tarsus. And he did. He taps out. Unseen Walker has tapped out Tarsus, the co-founder of shit is eliminated unseen walker the scottish mexican slayer has won his opening round match in the main event of shit and that is gonna do it unbelievable action in the ring tonight unseen walker came to shit and yeah shat upon the boss wow what a match what a finish tarsus got to be fuming about that last that last rope break call, that was as close as they come. Looks good to me. Foot must have barely been under the ropes. An unseen walker, your winner, Tarsus eliminated. Congratulations, unseen walker. Commiserations, Tarsus. Can't believe I'm saying that. Anyway, folks, that's going to do it for shit for this week. My name is Gorilla Mezzo. Thank you so much to the Twitch stream of Jimmy Fantastic for hosting the Skirmetso High Intensity Tournament tonight. As always, if you like what you saw, like, share, subscribe, and stay fantastic. And I'll see you next week, 8 p.m. UTC, for more of round one in shit. <laughs>